And so the journey begins uh, with the MTN8 over the weekend, and we saw all the games happening. There's going to be a big story to Derby now, where Chiefs are going to be playing Land of Pirates. Can you believe it as early as the season starts? And it all happens right here on Marawa TV. Great guests that are coming up uh, today. There's a, a, a bongo battle. I'll tell you why it's a bongo battle. You can feel it already. Hey, it's up in the air. And Amazulu making all the waves again, making top, top signings uh, today, unveiling the jersey last week, uh, unveiling the new management the other week. And today it's all about the players. It's getting closer now to the real action as far as Usu to Oma Peshanko are concerned. Hey, Christopher Bongo. Haven't seen this man in the longest time, but the football brain still stays. Good to see you, sir. Bonsoir. Merci beaucoup de m'avoir invité. I just said thank yeah. you very much for inviting me. This is the first time, so it is great. And uh, we are international. But of course. So but of course. So we're allowed to speak French. Uh, we're allowed to, to say Asalaamu Alaikum yes. to all our viewers throughout the continent. And the world. And the world. Yeah. Yes. A lot of people watching us uh, in Canada as well. I know that we get a lot of messages that come through from there uh, in the UK as well, in the Middle East. So thank you so much for your continued support. Don't be afraid to subscribe onto the channel. Uh, and I know that sometimes when you say subscribe, people think, yo, money is going to go off my account. No, nothing happens. You just press subscribe. Life happens. You get notifications and everything else. Uh, so never be afraid to be part of the family. And we'll make sure that we give you all the news as it happens. And because Christopher Bonga is here to break things down with us uh, today. Before we head off to Amazulu, before we talk to the players, and also another guest is going to be coming up a little bit later on, I'll tell you about it. Uh, but just think of another name that also has Bongo <laughs> in it. Then you'll get your clue. Sundown's out. Pirates through, Super Sporter through. And we got an encounter and a half. We saw TTM do what TTM have done. There's so many different talking points that we could dive into. But for you, people were just happy to have football back. How did you find it? I wasn't happy. If you follow South African football for a long time, yeah. top eight, it is a group of elite eight. Elite. What elite means is where the strength of the league, they're challenging themselves. Right. And they to find out how ready they are to start the season, what they are missing, where they're going to look for, and what to add. That's what the top eight in South Africa has been about, the elite eight of PSL. So if I'm talking to you today and you told me what you saw happening this weekend, it was elite eight of South African football, wow, we have a bit of a problem. Where was it lacking? You saying it wasn't the elite eight? Yeah. It what, did you, what did you find? It was elite seven. Who, who, who shouldn't have been there? TTM. Why? What have they done for them to belong there? They've bought a status. Status. That's all they've bought. Robert Marawa, today I can buy your name. Robert Marawa, I will never own your family. I will, ne I will never take your heritage. Mm. So wh that's what TTM has done. That's what PSL has done. PSL, they fall short a little bit. We have to go back in the beginning to understand something. PSL is one of the greatest achievements in South Africa since our independence. Right. It is a great brand that we have created, and many people in Africa, they actually respect it. But they are lacking in many small things into the PSL as a company, as an organization. One of them, it is about the status. If you buy a status, which you can do, you should not change the location of the status that you bought to the club that you bought. Right. And you should, you should not change the history of that club. Otherwise, what you do is you dilute everything and you start something new. Mm. In this case, when you buy a club that was based, in this case, in Johannesburg, when I signed my contract as an employee, there is a location of my employment. Right. Any contract you sign to work, they tell you where you're supposed to be working. Yeah. When I sign my contract to play for Beat Vet Vets, my location of employment was Johannesburg and Brandfontein. Mm. That was where I was supposed to be going to work. When you change that status without asking me, I've got the all right to say this contract is va no valid and void because... But don't you have a players' union then, Christopher Bongo? No, forget, about, forget about players' union. Why? For, are they that useless? Uh, the non-existence in, in the whole Africa. So they, no they are that useless? Non-existence. Okay. 
Useless, which means you do exist, but you have no use. Right. That's what useless is. People so they're beyond that. Pe people take it wrong to say, when somebody says, ah, Robert, you're useless, they think you're insulting them. It's not yeah. an insult. It's, I don't have use of you. So you are useless. I learned English. I did not speak English when I was born. Mm. I learned it. So I have to learn the nuance of words. Mm. So they are not useless. Useless is they do exist, but we don't use them. No, 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 no. They are non-existent. Mm. Because if you are existing, you are supposed to be the people in the table when they are selling the club. Mm. I mean, we're talking about MTN 8, we're talking about TTN, because it is very important. People mm. keep on forgetting that. People don't talk about it in South Africa. Mm. I keep on saying all the time, in South Africa, we talk loudly about football, but we support football loudly. Wow. We don't own football in this country. We are the only country in the world to replay a World Cup qualifier game after winning it. We're the only country mm. in the world. Mm. Mm. And nobody ever asks a question why. Mm. So in the TTM case, if TTM bought a status mm. and they change everything, it's not vets anymore, eliminate them, move one team up. A team that played all 30 games of mm. the season and qualify as a top eight. In this case, it's supposed to be another team bought by TS Galaxy, which did not work. You move another one up. Mm. Because they have no existence there. And that's what we saw happening. And somebody going to tell you, is TTM a lead club in South African football? It is not. So they, they, they let down not only themselves, but they brought down the quality of what the uh, premiership is all about. The, the purpose, standards the that, that were lowered on the day. Oh, yeah. No, no. Listen, this yeah. season we're not talking about it. But the top eight, the purpose of top eight is the elite eight of South African football to see their preseason, mm. what worked, what did not work, which player to bring, which area to not. That's where we have the elite eight. Right. That's where we got even the point where number one play number eight, number two play number. We, we are trying to find ways so that we can actually match, so that people can see what will happen mm. in the season. But if somebody said, okay, despite all the disorganization, yes, they didn't cover themselves in glory. They came through three subs and the socks that were worn by Brighton and Shong or socks <laughs> that were uh, from <laughs> Bitvest Vitz, it was Kappa, Kappa doesn't uh, sponsor them. Then they issued an apology letter that, that was written afterwards, but also just the way that the letter was written was, yeah, uh, left much to be desired. But... If I had to play devil's advocate and say, didn't they then come back on the field and show that they were able to fight and get the two goals, quality goals that they were? Because, yeah, they got pockets of, of good quality in terms of play. So whether or not you've got a, a coach or you've got a system, you know, at the sum total of the players that are there will make it happen. And we saw that happen. So on the field, you've highlighted all the nonsense that has happened off the field but on the field on the day come 90 minutes what did you make of them everywhere around the world if you become a professional athlete you have a talent so it could have even been in this case a black leopard playing in top eight they would have not been humiliated right so that is not the point the point is any team that any number of players they're going to put in the field 11 players those players are going to have a certain level of talent that is not the point the point is that's what I keep on talking about. The point is, even worldwide, even if we take a little bit of Europe, the Champions League has lost that thing. Mm. Because it's not the Champions League anymore. You finish fifth and you're in Champions League. Mm. It lost that thing. That this is the beginning of losing that thing in top eight. But w <coughs> They didn't deserve to be there. That's what I'm no, saying. No, 100%. Yes. They didn't. And, and that is why they were just a, it, it, a, a, it's a the shambles. Sa it's the same like... You d you a, a team did not get relegated because they play off with uh, uh, NFD teams and mm. uh, then you, you, you stay in PSL. No, no, no. You, you, you did not get promoted. You did not get relegated. It is for me... Because wh what is the point then of competition? For me, competition, especially football, is to win on the field. Now, also, there, there was this thing with Mulanga. Mulanga was unveiled by them and then he pops up in KZN. You, you, you are talking about level of... Is TTM ready to be a PSL club. That's what you're asking. Mm. My answer to that, do they have enough players to be in PSL? Yes. Are they organi well organized to be a PSL club? No. So Robert, you must understand something. People, many people, when they speak to me, they don't understand why sometimes I get so emotional when I'm talking about South Africa. I am a South African by choice. Yes. I was not born South African. I choose to be South African. So which means emotionally I am 
involved here. Mm. When there is a European game and there is a PSL game, I watch my PSL game because that's where I am. Mm. PSL, it is a big brand. So when I'm coming, I say I want to start a club in PSL, I should be asked quite a few questions. How are you organized? Where will you be playing? How many players do you have? What is your bank account? How much do you have? We should be going. It, this is not uh, a, a group of friends and they're creating uh, a Sunday league and then, okay, this is what we, No, no, this is a PSL. I watch PSL games in B in television, which is an international television. Yeah. The Derby plays those people who watch the African football. I mean, uh, Jerusalem, uh, the song by South African, become number one first in Belgium. Not in South Africa, it came first in Belgium. So South Africa is a big brand. Mm. PSL is a huge brand. We organize the World Cup. But is it, a, is it a brand that is willing to take the knocks now? Because if you set those standards and you have those barometers where you don't allow all of this that has been happening now, buy a club, take it there, change the name, dismiss the history. I mean, you saw Pirates, obviously, one of the beneficiaries of the VIT sale because in their starting <laughs> lineup, they had about, what, six players uh, that were former VIT West players. TTM got all the Pirate players. Listen, let's, let's, let's just be a little bit honest about ourselves. Mm. We do let South Africa down. I was told by a guy from a far away, from France. Mm. He says South Africa is like a Ferrari, and they use South Africa and you're like learners drivers. I say, what do you mean? He say, you will never enjoy the beauty of a Ferrari if you're learners driver. Mm. Mm. Why don't we ask, become, to push PSA to become accountable to us supporters, to us South African who love this football? They should not just make laws and going uh, left and right. Mm. For instance, South Africa has produced more foreign national team players than South African players. <laughs> no, that, that is true. Do you know why? Yeah. We don't have a barometer who should play in PSL. Well, they, they used to, but then half the time... Uh, no, but half the time, when you get to that point, a lot of the so-called foreign players then become naturalized South African, so it messes up the count. No, no, no. I'm not so talking about count. I'm talking about... Christopher Bongo, who never play, who will never smell to play for DRC, mm. comes in South Africa and they play for any club. I'm not talking about top club, any club in South Africa for the full season 30 games, mm. suddenly become a DRC national team player. What I am saying is when we import players here, yeah. we have no quality management, we have no quality checkup, we, ha we have nothing to, to say. You see, not any player can go and play in Egypt. No. Not any no. player, not any player no. can go and play even for Tipi Mazembe. Mm. You must come from either Chan uh, 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 selection mm -hmm. or you have been playing with your top teams. In, uh, we found names. You go and try to go to, to the social media, Google, to find the name of Christopher Bongo. You don't find him. But guess where he's playing? He's playing with a top South African team. Okay. And then you, you get shocked that he scored one goal after three seasons, and uh, you, 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 you wonder why South Africans were not going further. We do have a problem, Robert. And our problem is vivid when you look at the story of TTM. Mm. No, 100%. And, 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 and people will be more than within their rights to say, but they're not the only one. Yes, even the now promoted uh, Dube Birds, Morocco Swallows, uh, are still not Morocco Swallows. They are, you know, Swallows Football Club. Uh, also, you know, they had a status that was bought. Same with the team that we're about to talk about now, which is Amazulu. The name has been there, but it was a case of what happened in the lower division. Thunder. And there was a, a status thing uh, again. Uh, the issue around, um, you know, Cape Town City, for example, Mpumalanga Black Aces, that is, that, that's who, what, what they were what before. What so all of these things, there's a history, so it's not just TTM. What, what does it do? We become a league mm -hmm. where you can seriously talk about three clubs might win the league next season, next five seasons. Yes, beat Vesit as a, sh a, a hook. Mm. Is that what we want? We want the dominance of Melody Sundown, we want the dominance of Orlando Pirate, we want the dominance of, 
of, uh, uh, of a Keza chief. That's what we want. Well, you haven't had it for the past five or six years, the dominance. One. So now you have one. Hundred percent, because the structures changed. There's a there's a business philosophy. There's good coaches that are brought in. They do well in the transfer market. They buy the players that they want. They bring the coaches that they want. Uh, their development is great. Their exercise facilities are great. Their fitness trainer is that good that KB is no longer here. He's with the coach at Alali. That is how good. They are in terms of recruiting not only players, but who guides the team. Therefore, we stayed a, 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 a league that is not growing. Yeah. We should be growing. Robert, we have 50 million South Africans. Out of those 50 million, we can get 10 million football players. Out of those 10 million, we can have a good thousand that we can export, mm. bring them back, and dominate the continent. That's all I'm saying. I hear you. I hear you. And when you talk about 10, uh, that's the magic number as far as uh, <laughs> Mazulu are concerned because uh, when they were going out there to launch and release and make us know publicly about their new signings, that's what they had in mind. 10 quality that have been brought. We talked about the new era now uh, with Sandy Lezongo being in charge, being the president of the club and what sort of difference that he has made uh, in terms of the recruitment there. Uh, Ayanda Jamin is there. He's the, you know, he's the coach. His hands are going to be full now. Uh, yes, they're throwing him all the quality. Can they deliver? They've delivered a great jersey. And one of them <laughs> is going to be worn by Shaba, uh, who goes to the kingdom of the Zulus. Uh, and he's uh, on standby to chat to us. Uh, Spiwa Shabalala, thank you so much for your time. Good evening. Good evening, Rob, and good evening to the viewers. Thank you so much. Congratulations. How does it feel to be down near Teguine Kakasi in Mvan? Thank you. Oh, it feels great. It feels great to be here. You know, it, it feels great uh, to be back on the field. And um, it's a great feeling, you know, to, to start uh, the new era and embark on this journey with um, Usandi Lezung. Oh, my dot. But um, Sheng Shabala, Luwele Kaya. So, join me, Lady Smith, Black Mambas, um, Vanum Dial. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's, 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 it's something that I, I suppose you'd have thought about, but you'd have also looked at why you would say yes to going to an Amazulu team now, as opposed to maybe having to make a decision like that uh, maybe last season or the season before. What was it for you, Shaba, honestly, uh, that was an attraction to go down to KZN? Um, you know, I'm... Um, um I wanted to to be back on the field, you know, and the fans kept kept asking, uh, "When are you coming back? We want to see you on the field," you know. And I was trying to um, work hard, obviously uh, internally, and make sure that you know I'm I'm still in good shape. And there there were offers um, uh, on the table, but I I was not keen, you know. Um, when when I when when I had a chat with, with um, um, the president, Sandy, who was a good friend of mine, you know, when he told me about his plans for Su to, you know, the vision, you know, that's, that's, that's where, you know, I got a buy-in from because he's someone that um, I highly respect and look up to mm. in business and, you know, uh, a man of principle. So um, that's why I'm here, you know, to, to take up this new challenge and, and uh, to help where I possibly can, uh, obviously more on the field and, and off the field as well. That's an interesting take. When you talk about off the field, there's a possibility. Is this Shaba now starting to lean more towards, uh, you know, becoming in future a coach? Because you're a role model for many. I mean, everybody we were celebrating just the other day, uh, the plight of the World Cup 2010, your opening goal, and how everybody around the world had thoughts about, yeah, hey, 10 years later, you know, Shaba was the one who was being spoken about globally uh, as well. And, and here you are being a role model, somebody that we wake up and we see cycling. I don't even know, cycling. I'm over 31 Ks uh, in, in far flung, and I, was, I, I, I knew somehow that this cycling is not just a hobby. You know, you're keeping yourself in peak condition because there is something that's uh, about to happen. So tell me about that off the field. What is it off the field that you would also want to be doing? 
I think I think firstly and I, I, I you know I, I need to acknowledge um, um, the fact that you know the public love and respects me and and I, I'm truly grateful for that and I appreciate for the, uh, that I don't take that for, for granted and yeah it was hard I think it was hard for everyone during lockdown you know uh, people were stressed um, it was a difficult situation so you know one had to find the positives uh, in, in, in a negative situation. And I knew that one day I'll be back on the field. And I, I had to prepare myself, you know, um, do home, home, home training. And then, you know, um, I also enjoyed uh, cycling a lot. And it helped with my, my, my fitness as well. And, and, and besides, you know, uh, the training, I think, you know, um, our job is, is, is to serve. You know, we, we, we have a bigger purpose. You know, once once you leave this life, it's no longer about you because a lot of people, they look up to you. You know, so you, you, you touch lives in so many ways uh, with the gift that you have. So me being here, um, you know, that's what I want to achieve. And I, 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 I always say to people, you know, I, I can win a lot of trophies, I can win awards, I can achieve a lot, but my, my greatest legacy will be the lives that I've touched. And, um, you know, the opportunity has present, presented itself to come down to uh, KZN, to touch lives, you know, to, to continue the legacy and make a difference. And, and that difference begins immediately, but I mean, I, there would be so many people who would hate me if I don't ask the question, was there ever a chance of you going back to Kaiser Chiefs? Uh, I, I, I don't think so, honestly, Rob. Um, I, I know that when, when I left uh, for Turkey, you know, um, uh, yeah, I was of the view that, you know, I would, I would come back and, and uh, continue at the club. But, you know, nonetheless, it, it, it never happened. There's, there's no bad blood. You know, um, I'll, I'll always love the club and I'll always love the supporters. And, you know, it's, it's, it's just a new chapter. But Just a new chapter. Love it. The, I've, I've got a gentleman here who, who's been watching you play, I think, since you, <laughs> you came out of the maternity ward here. Yeah? Uh, <laughs> that's Chris. <Respect> <laughs> no. Um, hey, Junior, <laughs> he went to buy cows. I don't know what he's doing. He's, yeah, I have no idea. Where, yeah, but Bongo's here. And obviously, I wanted to ask and con congratulate you um, yeah. for the achievement. Go ahead, Bob. No, Ishama, congratulations for, for coming back. You know, something I always say, uh, Rob, around the world, there are only two nations, I mean, two continents, mm. but I can say, but two nations, I can say, that players, they always want to go and finish their career there. Right. In Africa, it is South Africa, and the rest of the world, it is South America. South American players, they want to finish their career in South America. And South African, they feel wherever they are around the world, they have to come back home. And that's something very good. So the question that I want to, to, speak, to ask you, Shaba, with your experience of being in tech, even when you speak now, I can feel it. I can feel there is a difference in the way you express yourself and you are putting people in front than yourself. Uh, is that the new role that you are talking about of guiding South African youth based on your uh, achievement, mistakes, and uh, experiences so that they can become better Shaba? Yeah, uh, thank you, big brother. Um, yeah, you are correct. Um, I've, I've been doing that, you know, uh, with my uh, programs on my foundation. You know, it's something that I'm passionate about. Um, I, I, you know, I want to change the, 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 the narrative, you know, of, of how being perceived in the public eye in football. And, um, you know, and, and also uh, this thing of, I don't know if it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a generational cycle or case that, you know, footballers, they, they do well. And then once they stop, uh, you know, uh, playing football, they struggle financially. So I want I want to change that. You know, it's gonna take some time, but it's something that can be achieved. And and we need to equip ourselves with with education as well. And uh, like I said before, 
uh, I have a duty to make sure that the next generation, you know, they, they, they get things easier than us. If it took me 10 steps to where I am, it should, t it should take them at least five steps yeah. as well. You know, I never had an opportunity to, to go overseas at age 12, but now I have an opportunity to help a youngster to, to realize the dream of playing overseas. At, um, so it's, it's one of the programs that I'm going to do and I'm going to extend them you know, abroad but they'll go hand in hand with, with, with education. I think education is the, is the key focal point, and it's as if uh, you knew, Shaba, because um, we also got a, a fantastic guest that's going to be coming up a little bit later on uh, who will talk on exactly what you've just mentioned now, uh, that it comes a certain time, and it happens a lot with football players, and we always need to find an intervention mechanism mm -hmm. so that things don't go downhill for, for the longest time. And that's exactly why we we're going to be chatting to him, because life experiences are, are incredible. He even played for your former team, Kaiser Chiefs, as well. Uh, but I don't think he's kicked a ball since maybe, what, 2019? He'll tell me about it uh, as well. So that is what we're trying to prevent, and, and, and your foundation and what you've been doing from an educational perspective um, is is world class and we really admire that aspect of you the philanthropy that you come up with uh, Shaba will be with you for for many many uh, years to come and I know what you uh, is going to be entering the world pretty soon again um, you, which is always a beautiful thing you're a father you're somebody who's extremely caring as well when when the people were talking about Chinese me I knew nothing about uh, the potential of you going to China was there ever such a thing or was this just a rumor that came and fell out of nowhere true uh, there was there was a great yeah. opportunity um, I, I I think it happened um, last year in in, in November um, Jasmine um, went to to China so there was there was um, uh, a deal there so I was, I was due to leave uh, the country early this year in, in January. And then, yeah, unfortunately, that's, that's when, you know, uh, COVID struck um, in, in China. So everything had to, to be put on hold and, and, and you know, until, um, and then, you know, until one felt that, you know, it's, it's late now, it's, it's, it's not going to happen, you know, and this thing maybe might take some time to, to go away. But there, were, there, you know, there was a great um, uh, a possibility for me to to go to China. Have you thought of just from an emotional perspective? Because if you correct me if I'm wrong, it's been what August uh, 2018 uh, when you last uh, kicked a, a football on South African soil in the uh, Premier Soccer League. Uh, your return, we, when you hear the, the local crowd, well, I don't know if there'll be crowds then, we're still <laughs> playing under lockdown, but, you know, when you hear this imaginary Vuvuzela, the, have, have you thought of that scene and, and how you would react as well? I mean, you, you're at a club where even guys that are seen to be at an advanced age, whether it was a late John Shoes Mashwewu, a, a Siabong Anom Vete, uh, but people who are extremely professional, who keep themselves uh, well maintained physically are there. Just your thoughts about your first game in that famous now to be 36 jersey that you're going to have, indicating the number of years that you are now. No, I'd, I'd be very happy. Uh, it, it, it's, it's exciting times. You know, um, this is who I am. You know, I love what I do. I love being being on the field. So I, I even, I even um, lost, you know, um, the hunger, the child in me. So um, I can't wait, you know, to be back uh, on my happy place. And of course, I, I, I do miss the fans, well, you know. And I mean, today, after, just after the announcement, you know, the, the phone has been ringing <laughs> nonstop with messages, uh, social media. Yeah. But it, it makes one, you know, appreciate, um, uh, you know, the, the love that um, he receives from 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 the public and the response has been has been very positive you know and i just have to 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 make them happy and the only way to for them to be happy is is is, is to is for them to see me on the field uh, there is one question that i get this question everywhere around the world about you so i want to ask you that question and the first time you'll answer it in marawa moments after scoring a goal in 2010 world cup who did you call 
Um, I, I, I think I called my parents. You think or um, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You called your mom, your I, dad. Who did you call? Who did you speak to first, and what did they say to you? <laughs> I, I, I think I did call my parents because they, they. I think they were seated right at the back of of of, of uh, the goal post where I scored um, the goal. So I did actually call them. Okay. So people here, you around the world. They yeah. always ask me that question. Who was the first person to be yeah. called? The girlfriend, <laughs> the wife. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. I called the rep. Yeah. Okay. All right. Beautiful stuff, man. Shaba, thanks for dropping in and being on the show. We just thought uh, we'd send our congratulations and uh, welcome to uh, my part of the world, uh, the kingdom of the Zulus. I know everybody is extremely excited. Um, hey, uh, there was an uncle that phoned me. I didn't even know he had a cell phone, but he always uses the <laughs> call box. Uh, we have phone with how he has. So, yeah. People love you. They embrace <laughs> everything about you. So have a wonderful stay at um, Uso too. And uh, I do enjoy your professionalism, your football, everything about you. True role model, Madam Dalla. Keep it up and good luck in the new journey. No, I appreciate the support. Thank you, Rob. Thanks so much, man. That's uh, a new journey there for uh, Jersey number 36. Hey, what do you make of that? You know, Amazulu, uh, the players that they sign, I feel like this is Italian team. Yeah. Because Italian team, they don't go with uh, the spring chickens. Augustine Mule. It dropped uh, his, his mind. I don't know what happened. You see, when you yeah. play with a big club and uh, you got two goals, and that's why we have to speak to this young man. Mm. You, sp you score two goals, you're in a newspaper, immediately your mind goes to... to he dropped his head down, he went two games, he did not get a goal, Mango is scoring, and suddenly he lost his own confidence. And uh, when he get in the field to play, he wanted to score a perfect goal or to give a perfect pass that they're going to have a picture and you, you post it, you're going to have a lot of lacks. Mm. He forgot what made him be signed by Orlando Pirates. I spoke with his former agent, Mike Mungavi. Yeah. Mungavi. He, he, he needed to get himself in the position where I have to work harder every single game for me to stay on the top. Mm -hmm. So when you have a player like Shaba <laughs> in your company, and then he went to Turkey in the country where he did not know the language. I always tell people, mm. you will remember how powerful you are when you go to a country where you can't speak the language. Mm. And you have to ask, where is the toilet? Mm. <laughs> so Simple things. Simple things. Yeah. Shaba will tell, uh, people like Shaba will say, listen, we are here to play. It is about the 90 minutes. The other games is gone. So when you look at this list of the players that they do have, I believe they've got a l experience together and the people who are in the end of their f playing football career, mm -hmm. they want to leave a legacy, it will be a good pot. It's going to be a good mix. So for me, I think Mlenga will do very good there. But do you think, though, when, when you start to look at the Mamelas of this world, the Justin Shongas that have had to also leave Orlando Pirates, um, that what happens within big teams, especially when you have such an embarrassment of riches as far as the talent is concerned, uh, but then you're not able to utilize maybe Shonga. Because again, watching that game over the weekend uh, for TTM, I'm like, hey, this is the Shonga that I know. This is the Shonga that came into SA and he still has it. Shoulder is light, he's yeah. playing his football, he's enjoying, he wants to prove. Yeah. That's what they forget. Every single game you must. He's obviously either breathing a sigh of relief like Phew, wow thank you let me readjust back to what i know as shonga i can do do you think the same thing can happen with uh, an augustine it, it it is a mentality like mm. uh, like, like shaba was saying it is a mentality it is this is what i coach this is what i teach i work for five years for fifa around the world teaching players athletes of beyond this there is a big life right but that life you prepare it now 
You must be present all the time. You must always know. You, you know this Amazulu, I'm thinking of, remember the old swallows, the swallows that are supposed to win the league, where they called everybody reject. Yes. That yes. swallows, I think yes. they finished two second. That is what I'm feeling of this Amazulu. They've got that feeling of, let me restart my life. Let me prove that I can play football. So they've pressed the refresh button. Refresh button. All right, let's talk about uh, refreshing uh, <laughs> news that's uh, come through as well. Again, with Amazul Augustine Mulanga, the very same player that we're chanting about here on the show with Christopher Bongo. Uh, he is on standby as well. He's also down in Durban. Um, Mr. Mulanga, good to see you. Welcome to the show. Yeah, thank you very much, Mr. Robert. You, you're happy, you're in Durban, you can see the ocean, uh, not as crazy traffic that you used to have here in Johannesburg. Just tell me the human feeling of this move for you. Yeah, like what I can say is that, uh, yeah, I'm happy and I'm so excited to join Amazuru and to be here in Durban because I think it's my time again to have that confidence that I used to have, like, this past uh, season, I think this time I need to work extra hard and to prove a point that I can still deliver mm. for the team, yeah. That, 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 is, that is such an important thing because it's almost like uh, what uh, Chris Bonga was talking about now and you've just mentioned it. You said the confidence that you used to have, mm. which means that the confidence disappeared somewhere. Where did it go, Augustine? No, uh, I can say that uh, the confidence is still there, but uh, the reason why I said like that is because last season I didn't like play most of the game, like a lot of the game. So the, that confidence, I can say that it's still there, but uh, like for now, I just have like to rebuild, to show it like, okay, I still have that confidence. Why do you think you weren't playing as much as we would have hoped to see you play? Mm. I think, I don't know. Maybe it's because changing of the coaches and uh, at first with the time that when Coach Mitchell left, that's when the things started changing. I think Coach Rulani wanted like to have we, to try to have his own team. And again, when Coach Zimbabwe came again, he also he was, I think, he was his feeling, he was having maybe the different feeling for us. Maybe he was trying to make his team also. And yeah, things like that, I think it happens in football, but uh, you you just have to, to be awake each and every time when they give you the chance. Like, And and yeah. when when you saw your name now being unveiled at another club, uh, among 22 other players that were being unveiled at uh, TTM um, and you were there. I mean, <laughs> all of a sudden people were saying to me, hey, are we seeing Mulanga is here, he's at the airport, he's off to Durban. Uh, then it was clear to me that you were not going to be a TTM player, uh, but you had been unveiled there. I'm sure you saw that. What did you make of that? What was going on there? Yeah, also me, I was so surprised when I... Uh, when I heard and saw that video when they were un unveiling their players, that they are TTM, and they mentioned my name, I was also surprised. And I don't know what to say because people they use like they were like busy sending me messages like, "Hey, congratulations, congratulations!" And I didn't know what to tell them because I didn't know what was happening. And I was so surprised. No wonder I was like quiet. I didn't post anything. I didn't say anything. What, what did that do to you? Do you think it messed up your chances somehow to do what you did now with Amazulu or you just looked at it? Because obviously that is misinformation. I don't think so because I think because I spoke to TTM at first and uh, the time I spoke to them, they asked me if I'm willing to join them and then I said yes and then I refer them like I gave them like my manager's name so that they can talk to my manager. But my manager came to me and said that, no, I told them this and this and this, but we didn't uh, reach the agreement that me, I, I want what I propose to them. So I think for that and for them to say my name to 
And though my name there was also surprised because what my manager told me was that uh, they didn't go along like according to the negotiation. So I was also surprised, yeah. Incredible stuff. Uh, no, uh, Bongo will come in in just a second. Uh, but w what gives you comfort, I would imagine, again, uh, Augustine, uh, you know, I'm, I'm already seeing a, a mu and a me. What is a mu and a me? Mulenga, memela. Used to be together. Now they are together in a different club. How much comfort does that give you, knowing that hey, a former teammate of yours is going to be uh, with you in a new journey? Uh, how, how have you been able to click because you would understand each other's style of play? Yeah, I think uh, it's going to be like uh, uh, much easier for me because Mehmet, I think he knows he knows me, and me also I know him. And I think it's not going to be difficult for us like uh, to adapt uh, into the team because me and him, if the coach is going to give us chance to play me and him maybe and the other guys, I think it's not going to be so difficult like for us to adapt to the team because me and him, we've been together like for two and a half years. Yeah, and uh, when we join the other guys, yeah, I'm sure it's not going to be Difficult for us. Uh, uh, now that you are in the king of the Zulus, uh, there is a lot of expectation, and the AFCON is about to kick off very, very soon. Do you think Amazulu is a restart button for you to be seen in AFCON? If that is yes, how many goals should we expect from you? Uh, yeah, I think like for for now, I just have to work extra hard to my game and try to improve each and every every time, so that when the time comes like for FIFA calendars, I can shine also for my country. Yeah, that's the important thing like for me. That is what I'm looking for, just to improve each and every time. And talk about improvement. Hmm. I'll make a couple of suggestions for you about <laughs> Durban, KZN, <laughs> uh, because, you know, that's, that's my home city. Um, but you've been warmly welcomed. And trust me, Augustine, I've watched you play even before you came to South Africa. Um, I don't think he's even reached close to the full potential None. Uh, that I know you possess. And I know that Bongo shares the same sentiment as well. If you had to quickly, I know we've got a minute left, um, just give him some word of advice, encouragement uh, in his new uh, home, especially because we want to see the true potential, the player that was there before he landed here in South Africa. No, actually, that is a very good uh, uh, point that you're making for me to speak with him. My experience of South Africa, Devon is a very good place for you to be quite well natal because of the heat and because of the humidity. It's going to remind you a lot uh, around the, 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 the Lusaka regions, which is a very good for you to play the Copper Belt as well. Uh, w w the mistake that many makes when they come to South Africa. They want to stay in routing in the big teams in South Africa, uh, which is here in routing. But you being in Durban, in the KwaZulu Natal, you will become people's people. So Amazulu is, Amazulu and Maris Beg, they are the clubs that is supported by the whole province. So you just do your work. Forget about Instagram. Forget about lacks in uh, social media. Keeping your training, Get your goals being scored, and they let people talk. Because I, Christophe Bonga, will criticize you almost in every single game that you play. That is my job. So my advice to you, keep your job is scoring goals, playing football, and make a Mazulu shine. Beautiful. Beautiful stuff. Just your final words, um, Augustine, to your many fans that are happy with the new move that you've made. Yeah, I'm so happy to be here, and I'm, I'm sure that even the supporters, they are happy to receive the news that uh, Augustine Mlenga has joined Amazulu. And I'm looking forward to join the other guys so that we can work together and achieve the goal that the club has set for this season so that we can make a, 
we can make our supporters happy because they they always be there for us so we have to make them happy yeah beautiful stuff beautiful stuff and um, those words forget about instagram and posing and all of these things from uh, mr bongo here thank you so much augustine all of the best at amazon thank you so much mr malaba <laughs> it, was, it was also a pleasure having me here thank you so so much <laughs> indeed <laughs> all, right, cool. all right good to see the smile back on your face again augustine yeah, uh, you know, it's already a good sign. I'm going to take your final comments because uh, we're going to say bongo out and bongo in. Bongo right in. Tip Mazembe wanted him, by the way, uh, I think three, three seasons ago, yes. Tip Mazembe wanted him to come because it seems like Zambia is a happy ground for Tip Mazembe. <laughs> to 100%. To, to get on. This is my last word for if you're watching at the moment and you're a football player, social media is for us mm. to criticize you to celebrate you, to enjoy you, to talk about you. Social media is not for you to spend your time there to, to see how many likes you have <laughs> and uh, to post which goal you score or uh, how beautiful that pass was. Because they keep in forgetting yeah. their jobs is to play football well yeah. so they can keep staying there. They are very lucky. They started with Orlando Pirate, now they go to Amazon, which means they are already been known. Mm. So now deliver. But uh, Robert, my last word to you is we have to own PSL, we have to own football. Mm. There are a lot of things that I, Christopher Bongo, not personally happy with mm. my country, especially when we come to football. We will find one day to, find to ask a question, why did we replay a World Cup qualifier game? They're the mm. only country in the world to do so. I mm. uh, will come to find out why I can just come and get a status and change the history. The reason I'm talking about this so passionately because I played for vets. Mm. I know you were part of that history. So when, when they, when, who was it? John Latham and everybody we was still there. No, Terry Payne, yeah, Joe Latham, John Latham and yeah. uh, Blankesy. Mm. So Derek was there. Now, can you imagine telling my son I used to play for a club he used to be called uh, vets? You say, what's South Africa? That? Yeah, vets. It's like the club that... 99 years. <laughs> Christopher Bong, bye-bye. Thank you so much for popping in here <laughs> on Marawa Moments. And uh, what an absolute gem uh, he is. Knows football through and through. We could have conversations for hours and hours. Uh, with Chris. It's just a, a wealth of information and knowledge. And we appreciate him as well. As I said, Bongo out, Bongo way to in. And in between, Kleinman addressed this issue around football players. And he spoke from the heart about it. So let's listen in as we are sharing Ubongo uh, to Jaya. You sit down, you say, 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 you cannot do that. You must take it away and I was, we should make this blame, but you can not person who's blame, make was good team and some food. And then tell the best you are, you pay me, you are, you are still, you are okay. I played for Casa Chiefs. Mm. I played for National Under 20, Under 23, uh, Bafana. Uh, but what this was into where are they now? My list was cutting Kulmanga previously. Sure. When I was down. And then we are born good to, that's nothing. It's mean nothing. Gone. You understand? Mm. People want something now. I mean, Mangzo for nearly coaching, as example, getting from his span by then. He's asked with your trainer. The coach will ask a question with, when last did you play your last game? So it's very important as a player. Talent only is not enough. Now they must know. Mm. Talent only is not enough. It's very important for you. You must know when you are given. You only have been given a platform. Sure. Many players today, top class as the coaching is really, when I'm a player that the team is so new, some of them they say no. Not to say they are bad. Kumbule mm. goes, Ogut Bafuna Ba, Ningale Soskati. So I'm a player as a maning. They must know what you only could have been given a chance, and you are lucky if you are there. Mm. It's one of the topiest. Imagine Absa Manchester TV mm. a, 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 a premiership. Yeah. So most of figure will be part of that. The profile individually, you create layers in future for your kids. Mm. You understand? So your reputation, it's very important to go part of that. You must be professional enough. Mm. It, it doesn't have to be somebody who would analyze yourself. You understand? In the number results as well. Whether it's playing, whether going forward, people will, 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 invest, will invest away. Nobody will just invest to somebody that will, will find himself. Because you can't invest in support like that. When you grow up, this was into Sasborn. That's why I need to be a thanks, Rodman. 
I'm lucky. I'm, I, 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 I believe with uh, previous being Peter and I'm a superstars. Mm -hmm. Keith Lerima was my close friend. When he died, we were together at night, and then he left heavily drunk, mm -hmm. and then collapsing in, in, in accident, died. Emmanuel Ngobese was my close friend. Superstars. You understand? Today, Umfana Udali only forces in the Kazakhs. Imagine if he played 10 or 12. Jesus. But he was a superstar mm. himself. Mm. But the life was cut because of his years as Hindu. Mm. Yeah, I'm still alive. Thanks, God. So it's a living testimony. Abanyabantu mm. Melanga Baza Bible a life. You might go not coming back at all. Mm. You understand? So, uh, uh, thanks, God, and my ancestors. All right, spitting flames there, Kleinman. Thank you so much uh, because it really bridges it nicely here for a player that's uh, played for, we're talking about clubs that uh, don't exist anymore. He's played for two of those clubs that don't exist, one of them being Bidvest Vitz, another one being Pumalanga Black Aces as well. But he still exists, and that is why we're happy to have him in studio. Uh, Bongo Leti Jaya, good to see you. Good to see you too, Rob. And good evening to your viewers. Those words from Junior Kanye. Powerful. I heard you, I saw... <laughs> I saw you <laughs> listening to every single thing that he was saying. Was it resonating? No, it was resonating because a lot of soccer players, it's, 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 it's about the fame at, at that moment. Mm. They don't think about what's after. And the main thing is what's, what comes after football. And if you can't maintain what comes after football, then you're going to have a big problem. Where are you now football-wise? Football-wise, I haven't been playing. When was the last time you kicked a ball? Um... I think it was April, April 2019. Yeah, April 2019, if I'm not mistaken. Mm. That was the last time I kicked a football. Yeah, you're right. I, I double checked on that. <laughs> you're 100% right. Why? W what has happened? I, I remember hosting you in previous shows that I've done because being this new kid on the block, having the talent that you have, it was an exciting time you know, and an opportunity for you to, to rise and shine. That's why you ended up going to Kaiser Chiefs uh, post your Cape Town City stint. What, what, Chiefs, what was going on? I was seeing you on the bench and then not seeing you on the bench. Then I'd see you in the grandstand and uh, so I don't see you in the grandstand. What was cooking? If, if, I had, if, if I had all the answers, I'd give them to you. But the main thing I can tell you is you work hard. Yeah. Some of these teams you work hard as much as possible, but at the end of the day, to what the coaches want at, the, at, the, at, at that present moment, you know. You were there, you brought, sometimes you play, sometimes you're not. But at the end of the day, it's a decision that was made from them. And sometimes you won't like it, sometimes you won't. Right. But for me, personally, I was a new kid on the block. I expected myself, I had lots of expectation from myself mm -hmm. to play a lot, to give back, you know what I mean? Because football is what I do best, is what I enjoy. But then to not play a lot, it becomes frustrating and everything. And you end up forgetting about football. So at the end of the day, what I told myself is that whatever happens, happens. If I play, if I don't play, it's fine. Because I was actually fed up by then when I was at Chiefs. I was like fed up and said no. Because I'm not playing as much as I was playing, it's frustrating. And there's nothing I can do about it. It's only about even the things that even made it worse, changing of coaches. You know, yeah. Coaches come with different philosophies. It becomes... Very hard for you, you not playing, and coaches come. Now the coach is going to focus on the guys that were playing and not the ones that weren't playing. So it becomes very hard for you to break into that and start playing and start your career and everything. So for me, it was one of those that I just had to accept and just move on. But that's, that's difficult to swallow, though, because th there's a C word called communication. Of course. So if, if you are not being played... And you're doing, as you say, you're giving your all the training, you're doing everything that's uh, basically asked of you as a professional footballer. Are those coaches that are coaching you not telling you why they're not playing you? Well, what can I say? You know, at the end of the day, when I was at Chiefs, it's, it's a big establishment. You should know what's expected of you, you know. You don't expect the coach to come to you and say, you know, you must do one, two, three and everything. Mm. At the end of the day, it's that personal relationship. For me, I believe it's that personal relationship between a player and a coach that you need to get the best out of your player. If you don't have that, you won't get the best out of your player. That's why, we, that's why I had it with Mushin and, and Eric Tinkler. You had it with uh, Roger Dessau. You had that, that personal, converse, personal communication where you, whatever you wanted, you do. But if you don't have that, it won't survive for so me. So they were honest 
With they were you. honest with you from the yeah. start. But then you get to where you come to a big club. A big club now, you have to be honest to yourself. Instead of having that personal relationship with the coach and saying, a coach would want this. You should be expected to do this. Mm -hmm. But now, if you're a kind of player that does that, and you find that the team does not play to suitable to what you're doing, then it becomes a big problem. But then th does it get to a point where you almost certainly know for sure that, you know what, whether they tell me or not, whether I'm in the starting lineup or if I'm featuring, if I'm in camp, I'm in the squad, I'm in the traveling squad or not, it really doesn't matter because it almost sounds now like you reach that point where, ah, Yazin. I was there already. You know, like, I think to use a word that you would even say, <laughs> Yazin, Zach. <laughs> I think I got there after... Uh, Coach Steve left. Mm. That's when all of that started. Now I was like, ah, nothing. Whatever happens, happens. I don't care anymore. Whatever they do, it's they say it's their job. But for me, this this was not what I expected. I expected more, mm. but I don't think I got what I expected. So whatever happens, happens. Whatever they do, whoever says what, it's okay. Just have to move on and just brush it off and just carry on with my life. But then do you, do you have somebody you can chat to and say, Guy, listen, I'm starting to lose my enjoyment factor of a sport that I love. I still love the badge. I want to still play, but I am just, uh, I'm lost within this whole environment because I, I just don't know what's going on. Do you have somebody that you, you could have reached out to within the club to express yourself? Well, no, there the were people, the people there that... You know, there's people that actually enjoyed me as a human being. Right. I'm not talking about football. Football is something else. As a human being, what kind of person are you to other people? There are people that are there for that. But I'm talking in a sense of football-wise. Yeah. Football playing, uh, that's where your personnel, your technical team. People that can help you grow as a player. Those people weren't there for me. Mm. I had to find that strength from somewhere else. Where will I find that strength? Maybe I'll find it when I go to gym alone. I'll find it when I go to my parents to go speak to them. Those are the kind of my friends. Those are the people I'll go to and speak about those things. You know, when you can feel it, in, you can feel it while you're playing. When, if you don't enjoy yourself. For me, I've always said this. If you don't enjoy yourself playing football, what's the point? That's for me. What's the point of me waking up every day, going to Naturena, but I'm not enjoying myself? I'm there for the in, I'm there for the friendships, the everything. But what is that? So to it's me? a social occasion. It's like MG Day, when we can, when you know what I mean. Ring, it's, uh, it's, 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 it's what I was going there for after after Coach Steve left. I was going in for that. I wasn't going there to play football anymore. I was just going there just to get the, my fitness up, and that's that's how I felt. And yeah. the funny thing, if I express that to them, it's gonna feel like I'm disrespecting them. I wasn't disrespecting them. I was just keeping it to myself because it's who I am. I don't want to be uh, telling them no because of this, this, no, mm -hmm. not that kind of person. If that person who's playing in front of me is playing, I'm happy for them. But then they should all. tell you then, uh, there are things like loan out to a certain club, there's transfer, then release the person. Well, so you, you're obviously not in prison. You have an opportunity to go somewhere else and play for another team, surely, if then there is no use for you within that one team. And that is why you've moved and you've transitioned from club to club is because your role had come to an end. Mulenga's role had come to an end. Uh, he's moved on. Memela's role had come to an end. He's moved on. And so that, I think, if you last played in, in April of 2019, that's a long time. It, it begs the question, do you still have that desire right now? If we're to pick up the phone and say, hey, Panyaz al Sufi, here's a man, or we saw the TTM, there's plenty of space there on that bench. Please give him an opportunity again. Do you still have that desire? I think, I think when, I, when I left Chiefs, the first thing I did, the first thing I did when I left Chiefs and I wasn't playing anymore, I went to go search for that inner boy in me, the one that loves to play football. I got that back. I enjoyed that feeling with, no, this person is back and he wants to go play. He's hungry to play. If I've been out for about two years and everything, doesn't matter to me. At the end of the day, football is in my blood. Football is a calling to me. Right. If I want to go play, I want to go play. But I want to go play where I know I'm going to enjoy myself. I'm not going to go there just to be a puppet to someone else. No, no, no. I want to go play. I want to go compete with other players because it's what I enjoy. That's why I took a break from football. I t even told myself after football, I had offers off the Chiefs. Mm -hmm. And? I turned them down. Why? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> Listen. 
for me, it was it was finding that. That's what I'm saying. It the was inner, finding the inner boy in me, yeah. that guy that wants to play football, wants to enjoy. So after Chiefs, that was gone. After Chiefs, it was gone. They were, it was not there. The only thing that was left was the person that was going to training, coming back, going to training, coming back. No person that actually enjoys playing football. It was not there at all. So I had to go find that person. Once I find that person, the office came in. Yeah. I told my mom. I, I think I told my my family. I was like, no, I want to take a break from football. You know, there's one thing in my life that made me love football. is the fact that I actually love to study. That's my biggest thing. I if remember that aspect from yeah, the previous, from the previous conversations. Everything. Because y you were driven not only just as a sportsman, but the education part is a major yes. part of it. Yes. For was me, that affected as well? That was affected as well. Because now, as I was a cheese, I wasn't doing anything. You know, I, did, I, I think while I was a cheese, I was working, I was on one diploma. I was just studying one diploma yeah. and for me at the end of the day it's the frustration not playing and the frustration of education is not going well. So I said no as in, let me stop. Once I stop I can focus on my education, focus on my studies even worse. Funny enough, with me not playing for about a couple of how many one year, how many months? Yeah, it's I don't over know. A year. It's yeah. over a year. I got three diplomas. Wow. <laughs> That's the nice thing about it. just three diplomas. Currently, right now, I was, I was telling one of my closest friends, mm. I want to become a paralegal. Wow. That's me. That's my ambition. I just want to be part of the law. The law is something good in, in, the, people, in, in, the, in the people of South Africa. You can see what's happening around, around the country, around the whole world. You want to be there. But at the end of the day, that wasn't only the only focus. My other focus was the diplomas that I had. I had one diploma which I actually wanted to utilize a lot, which is my trading and investment diploma. Right. So I had a, I've got a group of, group of people that I actually teach how to trade in the market. Ah. So you treat them the Forex market and you just treat them how to, how to make money, how to become financially uh, free yeah. for themselves without depending on anybody else. That's how you grow as a human being. Get another purpose where you know how you're going to build up to get what you know what's best. But you know where the trick is? The trick is that you study. And that is bravo to you because it goes back to what Tutlin Man was saying in the clip that we played is that football players, the fame, uh, the booze, the chicks, the what what is all there. And it is up to you to decide. And I'm using the words the players use. So, and, and unfortunately, that's just open conversation. You don't study for free. Of course. So now, if your income stops, has been stopped, then what happens to. Ujaiya, because now you can't even afford to pay for the tuition. True. You know, the, the, hey, if it's something I'm not supposed to say, <laughs> I'm sorry, but <laughs> so when they take that mode of transport from you that you were using to travel to Naturina, and they take your car, because you don't have a vehicle now, how does that sit with you? Because you used to come there, park in the midst of a whole array of supercars that have been souped up there in, 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 in the village, and it's perfect, it's beautiful. But that has been taken away because something was taken away from you in terms of ability. How, how does that sit with you? You know, that's a good story. That's, that's, that's one good story that I actually love telling because in life, yeah. in life there's, there's decisions that you have to take and you have to you have to follow through with them right. you know as a person i've always had savings i've always had things to fall back on and everything which is good for me mm. so what i did is i had a car i bought a house right mm. my mom had a car so once the contract chief's contract ended i had to come to a decision to make certain life life choices mm. that will actually help me to benefit to put me through and see where I can go with life. So what I did, I actually decided myself, I volunteered myself, volunteered my car to a dealership so that I get that money so I can pay off my mom's car and have money to pay off my own house. Hmm. That's me because I don't care about material stuff. Mm. They don't mean much to me. As long as the mode of transport is there, the mode of transport is there. My mom's car is there. If I needed to go somewhere, I'll go. If I need to go somewhere myself, there's an Uber. 
I can take an Uber to anywhere. So why would I have to worry about me owning a car and everything? I don't as long as I've got a roof over your as head. As long as I've got a roof over my head. That's yeah. the main thing. If I've got a roof over my head, I've got food that I can eat, yeah. I'm perfectly fine. If I've got money that's saved up that I can actually pay for my tuition, I'll do it. That's me. Mm. I don't care about material stuff. And me losing that, that part of thing mm. made me grow. I actually enjoyed myself. It actually grew me as a human being to see that there are more valuable things in life than the material stuff. Mm. There's life off the football. There's life that you can, there's things you, you can do. I can get back those things. Mm. As much as I'm saying, I've been telling you, I've been doing this trading thing and everything. I can get back those things with this trading thing. Mm. But it's not that, the point is not that. It's about empowering the youth. But to in, tra in trade, I legally though. I mean, I've, I've seen... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've seen stories about of um, Tito in speaking about the forex no, trading and so on we've and seen, so on. We've seen, we've seen his, we've seen his tweet. Because I want you to be on the same side of the law. Now the problem is, the problem is, I don't want to say anything bad. You yeah. know, some people that send out tweets like that is people that lost their own money without the knowledge. What are they doing wrong? That's the thing. They don't have the knowledge. They're following the money, not the knowledge. In trading, you always follow the knowledge. It's it's a part of life, it's mm. life skills. If you follow the knowledge, the money will follow you. But if you follow the money, then you'll lose all but the time. But wh wh what is this knowledge, though? Because we, we see a lot of the time people, hey, I'm, I'm, I'm trading, and then all of a sudden they're showing off stacks of money, <laughs> eating it like a sandwich on, on, on Instagram and pose, uh, posing with their multiple vehicles or posing in that one house that everybody poses <laughs> in, and then whether they claim that it's theirs or not, we don't know. But what is the right thing? Educate me who and educate us because right now, you know, the, the chat forum on, on the YouTube channel is going crazy because of, of what we're talking about now. And it is important to establish that because sometimes people do get duped. They do fall into the traps as well. How do you play it safe? Listen, uh, there are people out there that actually sell a product that say, no, if you do this and do this, if you do this, if you put this amount of money, I can make this amount of money for you in a, in a couple of months and everything. Listen, there is no such scheme in the whole universe that you put money now and you get a return right now. Never. Mm. It's never been done. Even institutions, big institutions don't do that. So why would you believe a person that actually tells you that? When we talk about knowledge, we talk about you understanding from the basics, mm. how to buy on the market, how to sell on the market, what is a pip, what is a candlestick, what is a bar chart. You need to know those things. How to analyze the market, how to, how to engulf into the market, how to grow yourself into the market. How do you channel those feelings? How do you control your emotions when you're gambling your own money? It's not about gambling money. Mm. It's about placing bets that actually will benefit your life. Right. So it's not about you, when you are trading, you're saying, I'm putting this amount of money, I want this. No. Mm. End of the day, the amount that you're trading. Mm. Life trading, I think when I started trading, I started in September. Last year? Or this year? 20, yeah. Last year, last year, September. September, yeah. I started in September. In a space of two to three months, I lost around about 10K. You know why? Because I was following the money. I wasn't following the knowledge. I read up about it. Mm -hmm. Studied it more, studied it more. Now I can perfectly say to you, probably in a week, I make $100 a week or $200 a week because I actually understand what's going on. Right. I actually know what institutions are doing. Because remember, there are two types of Forex traders. Right. They are technical Forex traders and they are fundamental Forex traders. Now you need to understand both of them. Fundamentals, how do they affect the market? Technicals, mm. how do they affect the market? If you don't understand those things, how are you going to go there and say, no, I've got a thousand rand, I'm going to put it in, I'm, I'm going to get money. You won't get that because you don't understand the basic. Let, let, let's just position this now because here you are, you're the legal eagle <laughs> wanting to be, right? When that kicks in and the lawyer part kicks in, that that you've studied in the three diplomas that you've done, does that lead more towards your journey in law or is it more leading towards your journey in trading? W what's, what's the ultimate goal? The ultimate goal is to empower the youth to be free, to be financially free. Right. That's the ultimate goal. I can study everything I want to study. I can study the law and everything. Mm. But if you're not financially free to do whatever you want with your own money, not depending on Robert Marau to give me this or whoever to know, mm. depend on yourself. If you say, I want to take a flight today to Paris and go enjoy my life, do it because you've got the money. That's, what, that's my end goal. Yeah. My end goal is to get the youth. Understand the youth. The youth has got a 
bit of issues. Some of them don't want to go to school and everything. Yeah. Listen, my biggest goal, you've got Forex traders outside this, this whole country. Get all those Forex traders into one room. Teach the youth how to be successful. Yeah, yeah no, that was just keep away from my Instagram account. <laughs> oh, hi, 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 hi. oh, hi. We're deleting every day. Delete, delete. But anyway, let's reestablish this hunger and the desire because ultimately... It's about play. You've got to play the game of football. Yes. And you are as ready as when. If, let's say after this conversation here, the calls come through, they want to sign you. Are you football mentally ready? Are you football physically ready? Like Shaba has been talking about training, training and cycling and doing all of those things. Are, are you ready on all of those aspects? I've been training alone yeah. since the start of the lockdown. You know what I mean? Training, at the end of the day, I can't be studying and not just sitting on the, on the, on the chair not doing anything. I have to do something. It's, it's, it helps the, uh, helps the mind go with anything. Football, football wise, when you talk about mentally football, football ready, I'm mentally football ready. Am I physically ready? Probably I'm around about 70 to 70 to 80 percent. Mm. But given the chance, why not? I love this thing. Why, why should I be backing away from it? Are you angry at someone? Are you angry at anybody in football that's let you down? Never. There's no point of being angry. Why should I be angry at that person? Because if I'm angry at that person, my success won't, won't shine. I don't need to be angry at them. At the end of the day, they gave me the opportunity. I didn't, I didn't portray the opportunity. Or I didn't play as much as everything. It's fine. At the end of the day, you grab it put it into your back pocket, throw it away, and let's move on. Life goes on. That's how it is. When, when Junior says what he says, and he says it in the f one of the first interviews that is there also on the YouTube channel that I always encourage people to go and watch because it was supposed to be an interview, but he took over, <laughs> which is what you want. You want the person to tell you their life story. You want them not to be led... So he took charge of that interview so that he could give direction and he could give encouragement. I mean, we've spoken to the Rato Chabangus of this world when it's a bit late and other players, I mean, I'm not going to mention all of them here. And that is where we don't want you to go into, you see, because you've been given a blessing, which is intellectually and also from a, a football playing perspective. We're not heading in that direction. Please promise us that we're not heading in that direction. We're still going to have Bongole to Jair tomorrow, next month, next year, 20 years from now, being the gentleman that you are. Listen, a lot of play I think I've after, after I stopped football at Cheese, a lot of people phoned me and say, why are you stopping? Why are you starting to play? And I told them the same thing. I was like, football is in my blood. Mm. I can't change it. You know what I mean? Mm. As I, sta I think I stated in my first interviews in, on TV, I, I said this before. I said, my mom's a teacher. My dad was a journalist. Where does the football come in? My football comes from my grandfather. Mm. So it's something I can't just let go. Yeah. It's, it's there. The intellectual part comes from my mother and father. Wow. That's the funny thing. It comes from there. So if I want to pursue something intellectual, it'd be coming from both of them. But right now, the hunger is with my grandfather. My grandfather's pushing me to say, my, my son, yeah. go do what you do best. It's you playing football. You love playing football. You enjoy yourself. You're always happy when you play football. Unbelievable. So go there and just do you. Do you. Because it's what you are. You didn't, you didn't just arrive in the scene and just yeah. cause so many, so many things and then people will just forget about you. It's never like that. You did something. You left a mark. Go back and leave another mark. Yeah. That's what you are. All right. L l let's do away with this uh, uh, confusion that's out there right now <laughs> on social media. Uh, the, the three diplomas in the short space of time, which ones were those so that we clarify this and people are saying, I tell me about that very quickly. We've we got to go. Three diplomas. I've got one in financial, uh, financial trading and investment. The other one is in uh, social media mm -hmm. and the other one is in weight loss and fitness. Those are three diplomas that I got. So in that period of time? In that period of time. Okay. Fadam Dal. Thank you so much for popping in. It's a pleasure. Um, you've got an entire nation, continent, and the world talking right now. I hope to see you back on the football field, though. I hope to be there, back. Yeah. be back as well. Yeah, I know your strengths. <laughs> I know your talents. <laughs> <laughs> and they're not exhausted yet. So get back into it. Bongo Le Tujaya, thanking him so much indeed. Thanks to Christopher Bongo, Augustine Mulanga, as well as Piwa Shabalala as well for joining us here on the show today. I know we've run over. We needed to. The conversation led us in that direction. But because we've also got the flexibility to do that. Until next time. Bye. Asam.